In this issue, Fashion Classics travels to Southeast Asia for Singapore's first ever fashion festival. Designer Song and Kelly adventured on an inspirational tour. There's a very quiet, mindful approach in Asia, and I think that really does reflect in the clothes. Asian Beauty's got new ideas from a MAC Cosmetics Pro. Makeup is really all about experimenting and having lots of fun. We went beyond the pages of Singapore's female magazine. So we like to think ourselves as a complete guide for modern women. We visited the set of celebrity photographer Russell Wong and more. Covering a mere 240 square miles, this colorful city-state is a melange of high-tech wizardry and Chinese, Malaysian and Indian culture. Residents treasure their eastern and colonial past while embracing western modernity. The Spring 2001 Fashion Festival underscored Singapore's initiation into the world's fashion orbit. The festival kicked off with a Kenzo presentation set against the Temasek Reflection Pool. Yeah, this is the biggest fashion uh, festival in Singapore. It's been pretty hectic. It's because these are the first time they do this, so everyone is looking for it. The collection, brought directly from Paris, was a hit with the local crowds. MAC Cosmetics' floating world tour made a Singapore stop off as well. The fundraising event encouraged local designers to participate and added a lively dose of fun to the week. Mac, Mac. <laughs> um, everyone's working for free, so we're really excited about this event. Really honored to able to display some of my pieces. How oh, it's been challenging, it's been wonderful. I think most important is for the good cause. A local label called Island Shop, with its batik prints and colorful and textural weaves, closed the festival with a memorable performance. Singapore-based design team Anne Kelly and Waikid Song had their creative start in London, but after establishing the label Song and Kelly, they moved to Asia. Singapore has such a great kind of infrastructure and it's such an easy city to live in. It's really, you know, it's beautiful, it's always sunny, that always helps. The organic simplicity of Song and Kelly's designs reflect their environment. I think the underlying theme is always, um, it's always similar, which is, which is pushing boundary of, of what um, modernity is to, to fashion. We've always been known as real modernists. I think that was um, our spring-summer 2001 collection, which was all based on nature and the exuberance of nature. So really the colour came from that. It was very spontaneous very unexpected colors next to each other, as you see in nature. There's a very quiet, mindful approach in Asia, and I think that really does reflect in the clothes. We've never purposely tried to do this east-west blend, but of course, it happens naturally. The blend of culture, vibrancy, and religious diversity is an everyday inspiration. Anne and Y could routinely explore Little India for hidden treasures. Well, we're in Little India, and this is where everything happens. This um, explosion of colors, and where we get our inspiration from, and um, loads of other things, even banana leaves that you can eat from. And look at all these flowers. It's fantastic. These are lotus. These are very religious. This is jasmine. So. It smells so beautiful. And the, all these are really wonderful colors. This is numerology. It's basically telling, um, it's 
telling his fortune based on numerology. So it's like the date of his birth. And he'll tell him what his destiny is. Look at these. Look at that. They're great. Wow. I could do ponytail. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> I love all the Indian jewellery, actually. Look at this piece here. We love Indian shoes. This is my favourite shoe shop. This is one of my favourite Indian shoes. It's great. It's really 80s. We actually used that in London Fashion Week, that shoe. <laughs> this is a, fa a traditional sari and fabric shop. And, um, Saris come in all different fabrics, whether they're silks or cottons and printed, hand printed. I like all these colours. Like all these are made, made in India. All these cottons. Yeah, that's so cool. Like, who would know the difference whether that was Chanel? We believe in good design. We believe that it can change the world. Design is a social force. You know, everything around us is designed. And so we feel a real responsibility in terms of design. And we want to to kind of bring a positive message or enrich people as much as we can through what we do. Meet the man behind the camera capturing the beauties of Asia. Singaporean photographer Russell Wong's images make an impact in Asia and beyond. I'm from here originally, but I went to school uh, in, in the States, the United States. I went to college there, um, I went to art school in um, Los Angeles. I moved back to Singapore in 1989, started my studio here. The way of doing business as compared to the States or the West is definitely different. There is a different way of working in Asia, the Asian way, so to speak, you know. I think it's different, definitely, because it's very non-confrontational and all that. His corporate clients range from Singapore Airlines to Cartier, but it's his ability to capture the essence of a celebrity that keeps Wong at the top of his field. Hi, I'm Joan Chen at the Singapore Zoo. People here in Asia, they, they know I, I work with Joan Chen quite a lot. And Joan was in The Last Emperor. And we've been friends for the past 11 years, and she's helped me out so much. And, you know, being a good friend, there's already this trust, this mutual trust, and that's why you get great photographs. I shoot with Michelle Yeoh quite a bit also. She was in Crouching Tiger. Michelle is different in the sense that she's actually a dancer, and she moves great, and she's athletic. You get a different type of photograph from her. This is uh, Oliver Stone, uh, we uh, photographed in Phuket uh, on the set of Heaven and Earth and um, you know, it was a, was, a, was a fun shoot, intense shoot because it's Oliver Stone. I think he looks pretty cool there, this, this intensity in his eyes. And one of the most difficult assignments in terms of the preparation was definitely Richard Gere. And going through the publicists and all that, it is a hassle but it's something you accept, you know, and, and it's a bit different here in Asia. You just call the person directly, hey! Jackie, you want to shoot? <laughs> and we shot this uh, in the middle of Nathan Road, which is in Kowloon, like a main main road, you know, like a uh, like a Fifth Avenue type road. No touch up, no computer. It was really on the street, no bodyguards, and you can see the people here waiting on the sides. I do a fair bit of editorial, primarily a lot for the you know, for the U.S. market, like for Entertainment Weekly and for Time Magazine. This is some of the swimsuit fashion stuff. Well, I've always been a people person, and since I was a kid, I was. the picture taking is just really part of it. It's all based on relationships. This small republic, with its fashionable intentions, has a developing modeling business. The Phantom Agency, owned by a sibling duo, is still one of the hottest. We have a lot of exotic um, boys and girls that we, you know, feel that it's right for the market. Byron, now he's a um, hot property. Singapore is very multinational. We have a lot of uh, Eurasian, Pan-Asian, Indian, Chinese. So when you get them all mixed up, you have this beautiful, exotic-looking people. And I really wish, honestly, 
our local woman, would be more experimental. After all, makeup is not permanent. If you don't like it, you just have to take it off. We strolled the streets of Singapore and immediately saw what multicultural allure is all about. MAC makeup artist Celestine Song breaks the rules while addressing the needs of Asian beauty. Belinda is Eurasian. She's a great combination of Canadian and Chinese. What's very key for summer is what we call colour placement. It's colour focus on one area. It's either your eyes, your cheeks or your lips. So we're going to focus on her eyes. Blue is basically a pretty hot colour for all seasons. It just varies, you know, depending on the in intensity. Brows are important because they define the shape of the face. For instance, like um, Asian women, mainly the Chinese, who are always so conscious about having round faces. How your brows are shaped and defined could help to a certain degree to elongate your face as well. Her lips are pretty defined. So I'm just going to like fill it with colour. So we're going to keep it very soft. Okay, and we're done. Okay. I'm basically putting foundation on her skin now. It's just quite a common factor for like Indian skin locally to have uneven skin tones. The foundation on her skin is a yellow based foundation as you can see from her natural colouring. You would want to get it close, as close to the natural skin tone as possible. The line that I'm doing, it's not a fine, perfect line. It's sort of smudged, just to keep it soft. She's got beautiful eyes, so we don't really have to do that much to accentuate it. Okay, lipstick. We're going to use Viva Glam 3, which is a plummy brown and it looks wonderful on all skin tones. I'm starting with lip colour first instead of lip pencil first because I don't want the line to be too defined. Lastly, just a touch of gloss, lip gloss in her lips just to add a little sheen to it. Oriental eyes, my personal favourite to do really. This is pretty common with um, Chinese girls and women. It's not that they haven't got eyelids, but it's like hidden. It's really right underneath. And to me, this is one of the beauty, honestly, of Chinese women. The misconception about small eyes is that by using lots of dark liners, it's going to open them up. It's really the opposite. The more darkness you have, the more going to make it more closed up so you should opt for like brighter shades this is Agnes she's Chinese green is really an underused color not just in Asia universally I'm gonna do a little bit of a smoky look here it's the, um, the smoldering underneath that makes it very sexy because the eyes are the main focus but I just wanted a slight tint of colour on her lips. It's high colour, but the payoff, it's going to be very fresh. Wherever you live, wherever you are, makeup is really all about experimenting and having lots of fun. It is nothing short of ironic that the young rule breakers of Singaporean interior design live behind the neighborhood police station. The daring duo, who studied graphic and interior design, were trespassing on the traditional conventions of home design with their company, Free Space Desire. Typical Singaporean, they go for trend. So it's really not much fun doing work with them um, because it, it all brings down to, to trend. The duo chart their own course in bold color and line. Action figures and film inspire their day-to-day -day creativity. I guess it's all about fun. So um, I think in whatever sort of design that we do, it's, it's mainly about fun and just to enjoy doing it. 
Like um, we love toys, we use like sort of bold colors sort of thing. I think it all comes from toys. From time to time, we, we try to put in colors, and, you know, bold colors, and you know, we try to educate these people to to accepting bolder designs and, and colors. I really like punchy colors, um, striking colors, which is um, in, people will feel very attracted to it. This is where we meet our customers, friends, and we hold parties over here. So it's really important. We spend most of our time here. An eclectic mix of materials accentuated the space. We use um, laminates, as usual, uh, wood, glass, carpet. Like this one here. Um, it's a table sort of thing. It's a fish tank concept. Everything is just based on fish and, and stuff related to fish. Um, we've got bubbles running underneath this glass panel. It's got that um, fluid oil sort of feel to it, but it's just water. It's actually a, a sofa seat. Um, it's, it's quite comfortable. It's made of PVC and um, laminates. Okay, the glass blocks. Um, actually, this were by chance because um, we went by this hardware store thing and we saw like the glass bo blocks and, and we thought they looked really cool. It's really important that um, we, we go for modern kind of stuff, which is, it blends in with the society. The bottom line is that we, we want something really loud. Positioning itself as the voice of Singapore woman, Female Magazine serves as a modern, hip guide for its readers. Fashion forward and funky, the pages of Female reflect the change in the climate in Singapore, a move from Eastern traditionalism to Western worldliness. Female Magazine is the complete magazine for intelligent, sophisticated women. And that's why in our magazine we try to cover all the bases, such as fashion, beauty, features and lifestyle issues. So, in 2001, what did the modern Singaporean woman want? A lot of it is um, more high-end labels. We, we try to do that because the local readers are really into that. They get a lot of inspiration by um, looking at pictures, magazines, that sort of thing. I think they like a lot of um, product information. They like to buy stuff. They like to know where to buy stuff and uh, they also like tips, good tips like um, what colours is used on this and how do you do it and you know, basic information for looking beautiful and great. Sex wise, as long as we're not too explicit in our pictures as well as what we say and as long as we don't talk about alternative sex, it's fine. Yeah, conventional sex is, is considered healthy. Yeah, and I, we are not encouraged to promote um, premarital sex or extramarital sex at all. Yeah, just good clean fun. <laughs> Keeping a balance between local tradition and jet set high glamour keeps the staff on their toes. It's a consumer title, so uh, and yet it's a fashion title as well. So we try to keep it accessible, but try to push things a little bit as well. Okay, it's yeah. <laughs> a good compromise. Yeah. We are a local magazine um, in the sense that women in Singapore can really relate to us because of the local content. Um, on the other hand. We also have quite a good grasp on what's happening worldwide in terms of fashion and beauty. I mean, if you talk about foreign titles like Harper's Bazaar from the US and all that, it's, it seems so foreign to you know, a Singaporean girl. So it may not be so close to her heart, some of the things that they talk about, they discuss. So we like to think ourselves as a complete guide you know, for women, modern women. The ultimate accessory for the girl on the go in Singapore? In 2001, it was her electronic gadgets, 
And to prove the point, television personality Samantha Toe hit the street for the latest in gadget glam. I'm a Sijadong的科技湾中心去看看最新的科技产品 这张是当我工作疲倦的时候呢 我觉得它还不够好女性适合用因为它很小很流行的今天来到科技湾<笑>